All right, so let's look at this um, problem. Uh, we need to, to determine the, the maximum force P here uh, that can be supported by the assembly without causing member AC to buckle. So we're worried about member AC to buckle. Now, how's it going to buckle? It might buckle if this force, the force in AC, you know, is, is too large. Uh, do you see that this... Let's see here. This is pin, pin, pin. These are all pin to pin. This is like a truss. Um, we could look at the force in AC and the force in AB. So let me look at joint A. So we got to go back to you know method of method of joints. I've got force P here. I've got force in AC. I've got force in AB. Now, do you see that the force in AC, that's going to be the force we use for P critical pi squared EI over KL squared. Uh, okay, this force down here is not the P. The P that we use in the column buckling is the, P, is the actual force of the column that we are worried about buckling, right? So don't just don't just plug in, don't just solve for P and plug it in right there. Our FAC is what we're gonna plug in right here. Alright, our FAC is what we're gonna plug in right here. So what is FAC? What is FAC? Uh, well, I this joint right here, I only have two equations for every joint. Some of the forces in X and some of the forces in Y. Um, I have three unknowns. I don't know P. I don't know FAC. I don't know FAB. Um, there are different ways to do this. You could kind of work backwards a little bit. But the way I like to do these problems, I kind of like to do all of my problems the same direction, the same way. I'm going to start out with the statics. And I'm going to have this force P. And I'm going to push it along throughout my problem. Okay. Okay, so let's see here. Before I get to the critical, um, the buckling force, let me just do some statics. Method of joints. Uh, let me sum the forces in X. All right, I've got FAC, and I've got the four fifths component for FAB equals zero. I don't, I don't know that. Let me sum the forces in Y. Negative P. And I've got the three-fifths component for FAB right there. So, so that means FAB is 1.67P. So I'm going to kind of write these in terms of P. And it's okay to have that P, have keep that P right there. But because I like to do this, and you can do this problem backwards, it might be a little bit easier, but um, I like to do these problems forwards. And I'm going to do my statics, and I'm going to write everything in terms of this P, and maybe we should we should call it a different force than P. Let me call it F or something. But I don't know. We'll, we'll keep with this P. Um, <clears throat> okay, plug that back in up there. All right, FAC would end up being sorry. This FAB it would be. Okay, I've kind of messed up this process. 1.33. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm tricking myself. Okay, FAC is 1.33P. Okay, now, yeah, this is important. I, I was tricking myself here. I guessed that it was going that way, but I was looking at joint A. I was looking at joint A, all right? And so I guessed tension on this joint. This negative means it was actually in compression. So what's really happening at joint A, what's really happening at joint A is I've got a P right there. Um, I've got 1.33 P in compression, 1.67 P uh, in tension for, for that, for these. So that is happening at joint A. All right. But that's looking at the joint. If I'm looking at the beam A, C, then I've got 1.33 P in compression. 
It means I've also got 1.33p in compression over here. So anyway, okay. I did statics in order to find that the axial force inside bar AC, the bar that I'm worried about making sure making sure AC doesn't buckle, um, the force inside that is 1.33p in compression. And buckling is compression. All right. That's how I was shaking myself. Buckling is compression. We're talking about compressive uh, forces right here. Okay, so now I'm ready to P critical equals pi squared EI over KL squared. Now the P critical is 1.33P. Not just, not just this P. It's the force inside that. Remember, it's 1.33P. And that's equal to pi squared E. So the E for this material A, same as the uh, previous problem, 29 times 10 to the 3 KSI. 29 times 10 to the 3 KSI. Uh, the I value. Okay. It doesn't uh, show us the side view of this, but right here, <coughs> yeah, it says diameter. If it says diameter, that's a circle. All right, if it says diameter, that's a circle. A diameter of 2. Um, so look on your formula sheet for the I of circles. It's 1 fourth pi r to the fourth. So this is 1 fourth pi um, r is 1 inch to the fourth divided by this k. This one is pin and pin. So the k value is 1. The length is 4 feet. Let's change that to 48 inches. And I'm going to square that. And then I'm going to solve for P. P, 36.6 kips. And that is the... Oh, oops. Okay. I, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I did not take... I forgot the factor of safety. All right. All right. If we have a factor of safety of 2 against buckling, then, so actually what I really got here, this would be 73.2 kips. All right. But if I want to guard against buckling using a factor of safety of 2, um, then I'm only going to allow it to get up to 36.6 kips. 36.6 kips. All right. Um, I don't think it asks, but I do kind of like for you to change that to stress. Say 36.6 kips over a cross-sectional area of pi r squared. Um, this would be 31.06 ksi. And just compare that to the yield stress for that material. This one's yield stress is 50 KSI. So yes, make sure that the buckling stress is less than the yield stress. It buckles before it yields. And so there's my buckling force. I'm going to only gonna allow it to get to a maximum of 36.6 kips. Okay, let's, uh, let's recap that. Let's recap that. Okay, so because this was, hey, determine the maximum force so that it won't buckle, my first instinct is to go to right here. And you, you could go to right here and solve for P critical and then plug it back into the statics. Um, but just know that this P critical is not the same as this force P. This P critical is a force inside this member. Okay? So anytime I see some sort of kind of complicated statics part of the problem, I like to start with statics. So I'm going to start with statics. I'm going to look, how can I look at this? This is kind of a truss. It's method of joints. Look at method of joints, and I'm going to sum my forces in X. I'm going to sum my forces in Y, and I'm going to, uh, if, if many times you have all the information, and many times you, you can just solve, hey, the force in, force in member AC is, you know, 77 kips or something like that, um, and then you can take that down here. But uh, this one, I was looking for P, so I don't know P, so I solved as best I could, the force inside member AC, 1.33p in compression. 
and so I plugged 1.33p in right here for my axial force um, and I knew the pi, I knew the E, the material, the I, the shape, the length right there, the axial length, solve for this P right here. So this is, wait, okay, sorry, just a second. Okay. All right, all right, so this is the force P right here. All right, this is the force P right here. 36.6. I'm only going to allow this to get up to 36.6 kips. Um, right there. So, I, okay, sorry. Okay, so we'll just kind of stop right there. All right. Statics. Do as much statics as you can to find this axial force right here. And then the axial force equals pi squared EI over KL squared. Solve for the unknown that you're trying to solve for force P. Okay, uh, this is force P. Um, the force inside member AC is 1.33 P. All right, the force inside member is 1.33 P. So I really should be applying that 1.33 P right here to figure out the stress right here. But I think it's only still only going to be 30 something. 39 or something right here still less than the yield stress. So I do kind of want you to I'll probably explicitly state Make sure it buckles before it yields calculate the stress that it buckles at calculate look compare that to the stress that it yields All right